In this video, we are going to be doing a walkthrough of the CryoSpark Workflows feature. At a high level, workflows allow you to take a predefined set of jobs with their inputs connected and their parameters either preset or exposed for setting during application of the workflow. In practice, what this usually means is that you will use a workflow for taking a pipeline of jobs to completion, either from an import job to an intermediate or final refinement job, or a subset of jobs either used for initial processing or branches used for continued processing. Before we dive into our full workflows tutorial, I'd like to take a moment to demonstrate CryoSpark's workflows running in a practical environment. Here we are inside of a workspace dedicated to processing the CB1 GPCR. As you can see at the bottom of our tree, we have a number of refinements and one that has been chosen as a final result. We will select this refinement and then open the Quick Actions menu, scroll down to the Select Ancestor Jobs option, and choose that. This selects all the parent jobs of this job that it's dependent on all the way up the tree to our import. In this case, what this allows us to do is choose all jobs that we need in order to create our pipeline. So we're going to right click on any of the selected jobs and choose the create workflow option. This will open the create workflow dialog, which we'll get into in significantly more depth later on in the tutorial. For now, we're simply going to maintain all of the default parameters, create a title, CB1 pipeline, and a category of C, C, B, one. Now we'll create our workflow by clicking the create button. Now that we've created our workflow, we are going to navigate to a new project and workspace to deploy it into. So we will navigate to a new project that I've created called CP1 workflow, and then navigate into the initial processing workspace that I've created to apply this work. We can navigate over to the workflows sidebar. And here we will have a list of all of the workflows that we've created. We'll search for our CB1 pipeline here and click it to open the apply dialog. The apply dialog resembles the create dialog in most aspects. And this is where we can modify our parameters that we've exposed and apply the workflow into the workspace of our choosing. We're going to select the Q1 apply option this allows us to queue all of our jobs in the workflow onto a selected lane. We'll choose our CryoEM 11 lane. We're going to keep all of our parameters as default for this demonstration and choose the apply option. This will begin to create all of our jobs and then start to connect them. Once the workflow has been successfully applied, it will show as a notification. Now our jobs are all being queued onto the lane that we selected. After queuing the jobs, our workflow is ready to go and will start to run until it reaches completion. Now that we've seen a demonstration of the workflows feature, we're going to navigate back to our initial tutorial workspace. We'll now go into a deeper overview of how workflows work. This workspace shows the T20S tutorial run to completion. This tutorial is available on the CrowdSpark guide. If you haven't processed it yet, we will link to it below this video. This should resemble the CrowdSpark processing pipeline that you are familiar with. So we're going to begin by selecting the import movies job. We're going to open the quick actions menu, and this time we're going to select all of the descendant jobs. Because this is a pipeline, this will select all the jobs that we want to include inside of our workflow. Now we're going to flip over to the detailed panel where we can see all of the jobs that we've selected. Here we can either create the workflow by clicking the create workflows button at the bottom of this sidebar, or we can right click on any of the jobs to choose the create workflow option in the quick actions menu. This will open the create dialog. Here we have two panels the configuration panel on the left side and the tree view panel on the right side. The tree view panel gives you a visual aid to navigate the jobs spatially and understand how they connect. Clicking on any of these jobs will navigate you to it in the configuration panel. On the left side, the configuration panel gives us options for specifying a title 
category, and description for our workflow. We're going to name our workflow T20S Tutorial. And we'll put it into the category of T20S. Below this, we can specify notes for the workflow. These could be anything from a data set path to, in this case, a tutorial link. So we're going to go to our CryoSpark tutorial page, take the link, and we'll put it here, T20S tutorial. And because this is a full Markdown supported editor, we can highlight this, select a link, and we can just put our link inside of here. Now, when we go back to view mode, we have our link available. This can be very powerful for leaving more comprehensive and easy to understand notes. Now we can scroll down to our initial import movies job. We can see the job panel, which has two sub panels, details and parameters. These function very similar to the job builder sidebar that you're familiar with. The details panel houses the title and the description for the job. These will be pre-populated with any title and description that the original job had. If we fill the title in here, 20S import, this will populate the corresponding job with a new title when it is applied. The same goes for the description. If we scroll down to the parameters section, we can see all of the custom parameters that were set on the initial job. Each parameter has a number of options. In the create dialog, you can clear the parameter to set it back to the default for the job. There is a visibility toggle, which you can use to hide a parameter so that it can't be used in the application of the workflow. This cannot be done on any parameters that have been set. You must clear them first and then click on the visibility button. The lock toggle will allow you to set a parameter that cannot be changed when the workflow is applied. This can be very useful for things, as we see below, as microscope parameters. You can lock these in if you know the workflow will be processed on the same microscope, so they cannot be changed run to run. Further, there are extra options for annotation. We have the flag option. This can be used to show that a parameter ought to be changed during application. This is a good example of that in a path. This may not always be the path you want to use. In this case, we are processing a tutorial data set, so we won't be changing it. But in many applications, you will want to be able to change the path to specify a different target that you're running your workflow on. We also have a fully markdown supported editor for annotations below. We can leave an annotation for this path, such as path should be changed if processing a different target. And we will see what this does during the application of the workflow. If we'd like to include other parameters in our workflow, we can toggle the all selection and we can see all of the parameters that are available for the job. Clicking the visibility button will allow that to show up in the custom parameters section. This will now be shown when applying the workflow. As you may have noticed, the header for the job will be highlighted in a purple color while we're editing it to show that it is the job that is currently being acted on. This corresponds to the tree view where the job will also be highlighted in purple. Let's select our template picker job and we will take a look at the final section of the job, the inputs panel. And we can also see that the import movies is highlighted in green. This shows us that we have edited parameters and if we'd like to go back, we know which jobs have been changed. So from here, we can open up the inputs panel and we can see that our templates have been chosen from the select 2D classes job and the micrographs have been chosen from the patch CTF estimation job. We can click on these jobs to quickly navigate back and forth from them. Now we are going to create our workflow. We have all of the parameters that we would like set and we are ready to go. Let's create the create button. Now that we've created our workflow, we're going to apply it in the same workspace. Let's deselect the jobs that we've selected. And we're going to go to the workflows panel. Here we have a filter set to just show our own workflows. We're going to choose the T20S tutorial workflow that we've just created and open up the apply dialog. The apply dialog will allow you to set 
various options that will be used when applying the workflow and update any details or parameters that were exposed during the creation of the workflow to be used when applying the workflow. Let's take a look down at our import movies job. We can see in the tree view that it has a flag beside it because we flagged the movies data path parameter. Let's select it. Over here, we can see the flag parameter as well as our annotation. Path should be changed processing a different target. We can also see the defect file path parameter that we included but did not set. This can be set to any value that we would like during the application of the workflow. And we can see our microscope parameters, which we locked. These cannot be changed during application. We can also see that the title was added to the details in the import movies job. This T corresponds to the set title attribute. We can change this and update the title for the job when it is applied. The same goes for the description. We can also see the exposed parameters for all the other jobs in the workflow. Let's say that we would like to parallelize on a couple more GPUs. We can change these and we will see the jobs turn to green for the custom parameters that have been set. Now let's navigate to the top of the configuration panel. We're going to choose the Q1 apply option like you did in our earlier demonstration. And we'll choose a lane that we would like to queue onto. We'll choose our Cryly M11 lane. This again allows us to queue all of the jobs in the workflow directly onto that lane and begin running them as soon as the workflow is applied. Below that, we have our tag options. By default, every job in a workflow has a tag applied to it. This allows you to quickly see which jobs came from which run of a workflow. We can further modify them optionally to show a specific title. Maybe you want to say T20S tutorial initial, and that will also be applied to the tag. This will show up in the tree view for clarity. Below that, we have our details so that we can quickly reference what we wrote in our create dialog, for instance, our tutorial link. Now that we've chosen our options and set the parameters that we wish to set, our workflow is ready to be applied. We can note that although we haven't changed our flag parameter for the movie data path, the workflow can still be applied. This is because workflows are designed to be as flexible as possible. And in some cases, we won't want to change flag parameters. They're more of a soft requirement than a hard requirement. So at this point, let's navigate down to the bottom of the workflow to the apply button. We will click the button to apply our workflow into our current workspace. This will begin constructing our jobs, linking them together, and then queuing them. As we can see, each of our jobs has the tag applied that we set with the title that we set to it. Now our jobs will begin to run until they run all the way to completion.